So here are all the brand new updates with Vision OS 2. First of all, we have a new environment, Bora Bora. It's finally here. You have to download it first, but the drawback is that is the only new environment. Apple, give us more environments, please. Also, there is an update to the home view. You can basically take your icons now and rearrange them any way you want to. It's kind of like, you know, jiggle mode on the iPhone where you're moving stuff around and everything kind of moves around with it. So you can still move stuff around and not just have everything in alphabetical order. We also now have a guest user update. You can save your most recent guest users eye and hand data that way they don't have to go through the setup the next time unfortunately it sounds like it's just limited to one person since you have to use the most recent person so if you were sharing the vision pro with just another person it'll be fine but if you're sharing the vision pro with multiple people they're going to have to basically put in all their information with their hands and their eyes every single time it's one of the new features i haven't gotten a chance to really test myself but I will try and test it out in the future. So hopefully it's all working. But once again, I'm just using the developer beta. So there's also an update in the Apple TV app with Major League Soccer and Major League Baseball. You can watch multiple games now. So we had this with the NBA TV app, but now you can watch up to five different games at the same time in five separate views. You can choose the main window and have four others and switch between them. So yeah, it's still just like the NBA app, except now you have it for MLB and MLS. The other thing that Apple announced is that we now have enhancements to Persona. So before Persona was in beta, it's still in beta, but now you got Persona on Vision OS 2. They say you'll be able to enjoy more accurate skin tones and vibrant colors or whatnot. Uh, the hand movements are supposed to be more fluid, and there's supposed to be a natural new animation effect. Um, to me, it looks better, but it doesn't look like miles better, but I'll take any improvement that you can get on vision OS two. I did set this up and tested it out a little bit. As far as setting up the persona, it is faster than it was before. So that's a good thing. We also have keyboard breakthrough. Yes, that's what they're advertising it as, but now you can see your keyboard in any environment when you're immersed in an environment. So let's say if you got like a whole immersion thing going on, you can see your MacBook keyboard. If you're using another keyboard by itself, you can see that too. Vision OS will like crop out part of the image to where you can see the keyboard and it makes things a little bit more natural. It was actually a lot easier to kind of use my Mac and the display and everything else when I could see the keyboard because I really don't memorize where the keys are. And a lot of times I have to look down to see where I'm typing. Along with that, you now have mouse support. So you can now connect your magic mouse or your third party Bluetooth mouse to help, you know, go around with the Vision Pro. And that's kind of a cool thing because before all you could use was just the magic trackpad, but now you have support for all of these other different accessories. So good on Apple for updating that. So there is a new update to Safari and Apple calls it more cinematic. So basically they're saying, you can enjoy watching videos on Safari on a quote unquote, truly massive screen while you're in any environment. So basically with Safari, you can watch movies and YouTube and it's supposed to fit in better with the, you know, immersion and the experience and all that stuff. I mean, it's kind of cool. It says, you know, hey, it's supposed to have a new beautiful glow and a reflection from the screen. Um, uh, it, it looks nice. This this is, once again, this is the Vision OS 2 beta. It might look a little bit different later on down the road, but from what I've seen, it's just all right. It looks cool. I'll take whatever improvements we can get, but it looks okay. Let's talk about communication safety. Honestly, this was on Vision OS's website. I don't remember this in the presentation, so I just got the notes from there. But it basically states that Communication safety includes protections for sensitive videos and photos that children may receive or attempt to send. You'll get a sensitive content warning and it'll give you the option to blur sensitive photos and videos you receive before you choose whether to view them. So I don't know what kind of sensitive content is going on on the Vision Pro, but I will leave that up to your own imagination. And that is basically what they have there. I honestly don't know if this was a feature before, but 
This is just something that they highlighted, so I'm going to assume that it's new. So we also have another feature in Vision OS 2 called AirPlay Receiver. Basically, you're supposed to be able to turn on AirPlay Receiver on the Apple Vision Pro and mirror content to any nearby iPhone or iPad that's on the same network. I tried doing this and I could not get it to work. I don't know if it's a bug with the whole beta or whatnot, but I tried putting it on my iPad. I got an error message. I tried putting it on my MacBook. I got an error message and pretty much anything else I tried it on, even with the iPhone, I still got an error message. So I just gave up and I couldn't really do anything with it. So I really don't know what to tell you guys, but the fact that it's there, maybe Apple gets this working later. Maybe there are other people with the beta that can get it working, but on my end, I could not get it to work. The mindfulness app also gets an update. Mindfulness now follows your breathing. So when you meditate, you can breathe and do all that stuff. And that's kind of a cool thing. So the Apple Vision Pro can sense your breathing rate and it will match it to the visual animations going in and going out and all of that, you know, kind of cool stuff there. I did try the mindfulness app for about five minutes. You do have, you know, a couple of different selections there. You do have the option to go five minutes, 10 minutes, or even 20 minutes if you got that much time. So um, it was pretty cool. I like it. I might use it a little bit more and it's a nice update. All right. Now this feature is pretty cool. It's called look to dictate. And honestly, this is like, this is like one of those conveniences that is really nice. And until you use it, you really don't appreciate it. But in the messages app, you can look at the mic icon and when it starts to pulse, you can start speaking what you want to type. And it's pretty good. Because one of the issues I used to have before was trying to go in there and type on the whole virtual keyboard and everything or whatnot. And I also know that people are like looking for more accessibility type of stuff. So with this, you can look at the icon, it starts to pulsate, and then you see like the colors, and then you can start talking. You see the words appear on the screen. This is better than just going to the keyboard and then hitting the, uh, the microphone button. So I'm going to have to test it a little bit further to see how far I can go with it. But honestly, I like it. Like this is one of my favorite features on the Vision OS 2. So now on the Vision Pro, you can turn older photos into spatial photos. The machine learning system uses a view from your left and your right eye to generate a 3D image from a previous older 2D image, creating what they call natural depth. Now I tested this out on my kid and some pictures that I took over the weekend. And this is dope. Like you would have to have the Vision Pro to really see this and to like enjoy the depth that's there, but you're getting multiple layers of depth. It will basically uh, separate multiple things in the background. So if you have just like a regular picture where it's just one person in the background, you'll see the person and then you'll see the depth of the background. But if you have a photo with multiple people in it and they're all at different distances, you'll be able to see the person in front, the person to the side, the person behind them, the background, like, this is crazy and it's really, really awesome. And I really, really like it. The only issue I have is this. Apple gave us the ability to do this amazing thing with spatial photos and older photos, but in the photos app, you still are not able to edit <laughs> any photo in there like you can on your iPhone or your iPad. I don't understand why they did that. The fact that they even gave us a feature where you can trim videos, you can trim the length of videos, but you can't edit a photo. I, I don't know why they did that. Apple, please fix that. Give us the ability to edit photos. Also in Vision OS, we have new gestures for the Vision Pro. I'll be honest, I tried this out. I kind of like it, but I kind of don't, but I just need to do this more so I can get used to it. But essentially, you're supposed to hold your hand you know, with your palm up and then look to like your thumb and then like this little circle appears. And if you click on that little circle, it will bring up like the home screen with all of your apps and all that stuff. Honestly, what you used to do before was you could go up to the digital crown and press on the digital crown and it would bring you to your app screen or you could look all the way up to the top and you would see like a little circle and then you could access control center this way. But with this new gesture, you can raise your hand, click on the dot. You can also flip your hand over and then control the volume, you know, going up and down. So 
that's a little bit easier than constantly looking up or trying to reach up. It's a little bit of a, you know, accessibility thing. Honestly, like I said, I'm still used to like the previous old way of doing it. So I have to practice this more to kind of be a little bit more adept with it. But it is easier to access control center sometimes when it's not acting all glitchy. Apple also announced enhancements to the Mac virtual display. You'll get three options for the display. You'll get a normal, a wide, and a ultra wide view. The ultra wide basically represents, you know, two 4K monitors side by side. They say that there will be higher resolutions available for that. I did test this out and I didn't have the three options. So that looks like it's still coming later. It's not available in the uh, Vision OS 2 beta right now, but I still like using this mode and using this in conjunction with being able to see the keyboard on my MacBook Pro. So I'm here for it. It's dope. I like it. Um, on a side note, they also did announce what they call train support, which is supposed to be new support for traveling on trains. I'll be honest, I have not traveled on a train with the Vision Pro. I know some people did mention before that there were some issues with travel mode, sometimes on planes or sometimes in cars. So maybe this train support is supposed to be the bridge between trains and cars and stuff like that. And it can help track these apps a little bit better. So that's kind of a cool thing to see. So another update that Apple hit us with, and honestly, this is one of the things I've been interested in as a creator, is it's going to be easier to make spatial content. Apple announced that Canon will offer a new lens to shoot spatial content on the Canon R7. Previously, you had to have like a Canon R5 and these dual eye fish lenses, and they were actually a lot more expensive. So that whole setup was just really a lot of money. This is supposed to be a cheaper, more affordable option, you know, like for creators and I guess people that aren't like super wealthy or whatnot. But the fact that you can do it on a mirrorless camera like the R7 is pretty dope. Apple also went on to say that the spatial videos will be able to be edited on Final Cut Pro for the Mac and they could be shared and viewed in the new Vimeo app for Vision OS. But that's kind of a cool thing because like I said, I've been trying to figure out how Apple's been doing this before. And a lot of the stuff has been kind of hush hush, like only a couple of people really talked about some of the details, but it's kind of cool to see Apple just going out there and say, hey, we are supporting this, go ahead and flourish and make this content. So Apple also announced that creators will be able to make Apple immersive videos. These are those 180 degree immersive videos recorded in 8K that you saw in the demos and the experiences and all that stuff. So Apple is now going to partner with Blackmagic to help creators make these immersive videos. This will include a new production workflow consisting of Blackmagic cameras, DaVinci Resolve Studio, and Apple Compressor. So the new immersive content also will include Extreme sports with Red Bull, which is kind of dope with that whole first person type of thing. And you're going to have a new musical immersive experience or whatnot. And they were talking about featuring The Weeknd. They really didn't name any other artists, but they kind of just led with that. And Apple is coming with their own immersive short film called Submerged. So we're finally going to be able to see like a, so not like a feature length film, but just a regular film, but through like this immersive view so that's really really interesting so definitely want to see that the only drawback to this is that when you kind of go in and you look at apple tv plus and you look at like their content library a lot of the stuff that they've previewed before in these trailers still hasn't come yet i still want that underwater experience where they're swimming around the sharks and doing this stuff i still want the experiences with the major league soccer i still want the experiences with the nfl to where I could see more of that content. So like I said, it's cool that they're giving us, they're basically supporting the ability for us to do this stuff. And it's really awesome, but I want the stuff that Apple showed us. That's what I want. So basically that's the update for everything. I'll see you guys in the next video. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Peace.